Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to University of the United Methodist Church. Here we believe whoever you are and wherever you are on your faith journey or life journey, you are welcome here. I'm Earl Kim, one of the uh, pastors here, an, an associate pastor using uh, pronouns he, him. Um, today, I just have a, a reminder for you that you have a black registration pad in your pew, and especially if you are a visitor or a guest, uh, please uh, look at the pad and then leave us some of your information so that we can reach out to you and share some um, information you need. Or you can share your prayer request or other things uh, on the bottom par part of the pad uh, with us. Now, if you are able, please stand in body or in spirit for call to worship. We set aside this time to worship. We come carrying worries to tears, losses and dreams. We come opening our hearts to God's grace. We come opening our minds to God's word. We come feeling overwhelmed and unsure of ourselves with too much to manage and too little love. We come opening our lives to God's spirit. We come as we are to be embraced as we are by God's eternal love. Let us join our voices in singing the opening hymn, Gather Us In. peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. At this time, let us exchange signs of peace with one another.
invite children of all ages to come forward now. You are the first one here. Good morning, friends. Come on down. This is where children belong. I love that song, and I'm glad that you're here with me today. Does anybody remember why maybe I'm here instead of Miss Jillian? Yes. What? That's right, they're on a mission trip. The youth and Miss Jillian and Miss Natasha and your big sisters there, Pierce. Um, so I, I want to share with you something about that, but before I get there, I want to tell you a little bit about the story from the Bible that we're going to hear about today. So can you all hear me? This story tells us of Jesus who came to teach us about loving and serving. And in this story, he sends out his disciples. Do we know who the disciples are? Those are like the people who follow him. You know them, yeah. They're like his friends. They follow him. And so Jesus is saying to his disciples, I want you to follow in my way of love and service, and I'm going to send you out there into the world to love and to serve. But you know the cool thing that Jesus does that I love in this story is that he tells them to go in twos. Does that remind you of anything? Is there some story in the Bible where animals go two by two? What? Noah's Ark. That's right. This reminds me of Noah's Ark, where the disciples are told not to go by themselves, but to go with a friend. Is it good to have friends? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I hope that you all have good buddies in your life. And speaking of Miss Jillian and where she's out, I wanted to share with you, do you see these friends? I have a picture for all of you. Do you recognize anybody? I'll show it to you in just a second. You recognize all of them? I recognize one. You recognize one of them? Do you see Miss Jillian in there? She's got her sunglasses on. You can still see her. You know all these dudes. Well, these are, these are, these, some of these children grew up in this church and they used to be your size and now they're youth on a mission trip. And I think some of our grown ups saw this picture in the newsletter. This is a picture of our youth. And when they went on on the mission trip, did they go by themselves? No. no, they went with all their friends. They didn't have to do it alone. And they did. Now, I got some pictures of them doing some fun things like eating ice cream and stuff. But I also have evidence that they worked hard. Here's some picture of them working in the garden. They did some gardening. Yeah. This is in a different place in Missouri. Yeah, who's that, Pierce? That's Magnolia with the lawnmower, mom and dad back there. Magnolia with the lawnmower. And do you, do you see that she's doing all this work all by herself? No, there's other youth in the background that are also doing the work. And I wanted to share this with you, again, to remind us that Jesus calls us to love and serve, but we don't do that by ourselves. We get to do it with friends. And I hope that someday you'll continue to grow up in this church and then you're going to go on a mission trip maybe someday. All right, so let's have a quick word of prayer and then you can either go to Children's Church or stay here. All right, let's pray. Thank you, God, for this day. And thank you for our friends. Help us to be a good friend. Bring our youth back safely. And Miss Jillian and Miss Natasha, and help us to love and serve you. Thank you above all for helping us to know that we are never alone because you are with us. Amen. Grateful for all of you. You can again go back to your seats or you can um, go to child care. Thank you.
Let us pray. Loving God, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. The Gospel reading is from Mark chapter 6. Jesus left that place and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon, and, not, and are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor, except in their hometown and among their own kin, and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching. He called the 12 and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed all that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The word of God for the people of God. good to be with you. Friends, may you pray with me and for me. Let us pray. God of love, we give you thanks for the peace and your presence in this place. We give you thanks for your holy and living word. And we ask in these moments now that the words of my mouth be acceptable in your sight. For you alone are our strength and our salvation. Amen. So it was 250 years ago. 250 years ago, the founder of Methodism, John Wesley, was preaching in Bristol, England. At that time, that city was the second largest city in England. It was 1774, and a contentious election for Parliament was underway. The two main candidates were Edmund Burke and Henry Kruger. They differed in their political ideologies. They differed in their position about the American colonies. They differed in their support from religious groups. Their platforms varied so drastically that their supporters were deeply divided against one another. I don't know if any of this sounds familiar. So Wesley offered guidance to church members and later that day wrote these words in his journal. He said, I met those of our society who had votes in the ensuing election and advised them. He then recorded his advice, which is still known today as Wesley's three rules for voting. Number one, vote without fee or reward for the person you judge most worthy. Are y'all with me? I think I can do that. I think I can vote for the person I think is best. I don't need to be paid or bribed to do so. 
Number two, speak no evil of the person you vote against. So I'm kind of struggling already. <laughs> but it gets harder. Number three, take care that your spirits are not sharpened against those who vote on the other side. It seems really, really hard to do, which is why Wesley's advice is good advice to still consider today. He knew that animosity sows the seeds of violence. Wesley strived himself to follow the Prince of Peace, and therefore he described violence as nothing short of rebellion against humanity and God. He even called war the foulest curse on the face of humanity. Now, y'all, I wrote all these words before the news of yesterday's events, and they seem all the more relevant. May you and I, may we here in this place and in the living of our lives follow the Prince of Peace to be peaceful ourselves in word and action. We often assume we alone are living in unprecedented times. Did y'all get tired of that word during the pandemic or is it just me? Unprecedented. But there was a reason that Wesley had his three rules for voting. It was a time of tremendous conflict and division. And in today's gospel story, we hear of Jesus, the one who spoke against an empire that was filled with corruption and the abuse of power. As I look at this specific story that Walter just read for us, I see Jesus providing for us a few helpful lessons as we navigate today's troublesome political landscape. You've just heard the story that he read. Jesus goes back to his hometown and his ministry isn't really received well there. And I love how Jesus handles all of this. He's like, okay, disciples, it didn't go all that great for me, so I've decided that instead I'm going to send you out there. <laughs> but they don't go alone. He tells them to go in pairs. And then Jesus goes on to say that if you aren't received well, shake the dust off your feet. And true confession all week long, I've kept hearing Taylor Swift's song, Shake It Off, Sing In My Head. Three lessons from Jesus. First, he faced rejection in his hometown. Have you ever felt rejected? Maybe even at home, maybe especially at home, or maybe if not at home, by people who you thought were as close to you as family, friends or co-workers, maybe it was a high school reunion and you think to yourself as you look around the room, I grew up with these people, but I just feel so alone now. I remember the first time I had a few colleagues unfriend me. Isn't that just such a word that Facebook gave us? A few t of time that a few colleagues unfriended me because they didn't like what I was posting. It felt like rejection. Jesus knew what it was like to experience rejection. And I want you to know that as you continue to move through the weeks and the months ahead, if you find yourself experiencing rejection from people close to you, know that Jesus has compassion for you, can empathize. And we can look to Jesus as an example of how to stay grounded in the face of rejection. You see, Jesus knew who he was. He was spiritually centered. He was authentic. He was what I think we would call today emotionally intelligent. And it makes me wonder if he had somebody like Brene Brown as a life coach. In all seriousness, Jesus knew how to stand firm in his convictions, even in the face of rejection, even in the wilderness. He planted himself in the things of service and love. He lived a life of peace and justice, even when he felt alone in that journey. It is in her book, Braving the Wilderness, that Brene Brown writes about the work of soul searching that enables us to be clear about who we are and where we stand. 
no matter what others say. She writes, true belonging is the spiritual practice of believing in and belonging to yourself so deeply that you can share your most authentic self with the world and find sacredness in both being a part of something and standing alone in the wilderness. True belonging doesn't require you to change who you are. It requires you to be who you are. Have you ever felt alone in the wilderness? Now, this is not to say that Jesus wants us to be lonely. After all, his second lesson for us today is all about the importance of community. But Jesus does demonstrate for us what it looks like to be at peace with who and whose we are. After all, being alone and feeling lonely are not the exact same thing. Jesus longs for us to have the type of peace that he had, a peace that helps us to be true to ourselves even when we face rejection, even when we feel like a lone voice, a peace that reminds us that there is something deeper and more true than all the world's news. Lesson two, Jesus sends those disciples out in twos. Yes, Jesus knew how to stand alone in the wilderness, but he knew that we as humans were ultimately created to be in relationship, to be in community, to be connected with God, one another, and the whole of God's creation, the world. We need other people in our lives. I recently read Anne Lamont's latest book, and at one point she says this. She said, you know, my mind is like a bad neighborhood, and I don't need to be there alone. <laughs> I love that line. And she goes on and she said, this is why I have a therapist. Having trusted people in your life that you can connect with is important. Friends to experience life with and maybe even somebody to process the news with. It's all important. I hope and pray that this place called UUMC provides you with a faith friend or a small group with whom you can share. I imagine those disciples that Jesus sent out in twos. Maybe after one of their encounters in life, I can see them walking down the road and processing with one another. Well, how do you think that went? That was hard. They might even have some friendly advice to one another. Why'd you say it like that? Well, what would you have done? Jesus knows that we need one another, that we are created for relationship. And he knows that there is beautiful, beautiful connection in community. But Jesus also knows that sometimes there is conflict. You know, I remember, I remember one of the very first weeks where I had landed as your new pastor years ago. Um, one of those first few weeks, somebody um, approached me and they said, and you know, Teresa, the most wonderful thing about being at university is that we all agree on everything. <laughs> I looked around and I saw more than two people and I said, I bet that's not true. <laughs> and I can say with confidence a few years later, I know that's not true. I've heard, in all seriousness, I've heard people say to me, you know, Teresa, we're talking about this too much, fill in the blank. And then I've heard people say, Teresa, we're talking too much about fill in the blank with the same topic or issue. I've heard people say, we need to do more work on this, or we're not doing enough on that, we've done too much, we're going too far, we haven't gone far enough. Well, here's the thing. When I hear all of these different voices as your pastor, I think to myself, this is not all bad. In fact, it's normal, and I say even good because I believe that one of the gifts that the church has to offer the world right now is how to love one another and serve together even when we don't agree 100% on every single thing. Now, I wanna be clear. This does not mean that we tolerate intolerance or remain silent in the face of injustice, 
It doesn't mean that we rejoice in the face of heated conflict, but it does mean that we know the beauty and gift of being in relationship with other people, knowing that it involves sharing and listening and even learning from one another. In the type of political climate in which we're living, it can be a dance, I know, a dance sometimes in knowing when to be connected and when to step away. I've shared with you that, like a lot of people, I've faced my own rejection at times. And I'm going to be honest with you that it was not long ago, it was earlier this summer, that I myself decided to not show up at an extended family gathering to see people I hadn't seen in a long time. But I chose not to go because I just felt like I needed to protect my heart that day. You know, I used to to think the phrase, agree to disagree, was a really good one. But the late writer and social activist James Baldwin expands that phrase in an important way. Thank you, Brandon, for reminding me of this quote last week in Sunday school. James Baldwin was known for saying, we can disagree unless your disagreement is rooted in my oppression and the denial of my humanity and my right to exist. It's a dance, knowing when to stay connected and when to step away. Jesus understands that. He understood he needed to step away at times in his own relationships. And as he told the early disciples, he said, if if any place does not welcome you and they refuse to hear you as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. That's what Jesus says. I note, I've noted that Jesus did not say when people refuse to hear you, It's smart to engage in a back and forth argument on social media (laughs) because, because you can change a lot of people's minds that way. No, he didn't say that. He said, shake the dust off. It means letting go for the sake of living your life, for the sake of creating more space for joy. Taylor Swift, and I'm really sad that my, my own kid isn't here to, to hear my Taylor Swift reference. But Taylor Swift wrote, Shake It Off, during a season of her life when the media outlets were amplifying voices that were highly critical of her. Haters gonna hate, 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 shake it off. I know you wanna sing, Amanda, no. (laughs) Shake it off because there's a life to live and there is joy to be had. This joy is not the denial of trouble in the world, It is a joy that is an act of defiance in the face of such trouble. We name our pain and we are honest about our despair, but we shall not dwell there too long. Because here in this place, we are reminded that the God, the God of all creation, calls us to a life of awe and wonder, longs for us to experience that. Here in this place, we are promised through resurrection hope that the worst things are never the last things. And we are sent forth to proclaim to a hungry world, a world hungry with hope, that God is with us, that we are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen.
these heavy hands hang at the ends of my arms and my colors change like the sea but i don't worry much about time lost i'm not gunning for the dreams i couldn't find he taught me how to walk the best that i can on the road i've left behind but most of all, he taught me to forgive, how to keep a cool head, how to love the one you're with. And when I'm far into the distance and the pushing comes to shove, to remember what comes back when you give away your love, give away your love. Haven't seen my mother's face in a while But her words are always falling out my mouth My mind and spirit are at odds sometimes And they fight like the North and the South But I still care enough to bear the weight of the heaviness to which my heart is tethered She taught me how to be strong and say goodbye And that love is forever But most of all She taught me how to fight how to move across the line between the wrong and the right and when i'm turned out in the darkness and the pushing comes to shove to remember what comes back when you give away your love give away your love when you give your love away give away your love give your love away Give your love away And remember what comes back to you Give your love away Oh, give your love away And remember what comes back I haven't seen my father in some time but his face is always staring back at me His heavy hands swing at the ends of my arms But my colors change like the sea Last night you may all hear the disturbing news about the attempted assassination and you may come here with some confusion and heavy heart. So this time I invite you to um, gather your hearts and be still in the presence of our God. Let us pray. When our land is deeply stained by violence, we come before you, O God of love. Be our light and our shepherd. Lead us not to follow the ways of evil that ruin our world. Keep us from the spiritual forces of the host hostility and wickedness of this day. When our time is helplessly shaped by extreme conflict and division, we come before you, Jesus, for you are our peace. Save us from confusion and distress. Create in us the heart of peace. 
and let us beat our sword into plowshares and spears into pruning hooks. When our hearts are torn with anger and hopelessness, we come before you, the spirit of new creation. Mend our wounds, calm our minds, revive our souls, and let us open our eyes to see once again the lights of hope that are always in and around us, even if they look deeming and flickering at times. Holy God, we also come before you in this prayer, lifting to you our joys and concerns, hearing our prayers for those whose lives have touched us, those who are in pain, those who are ill, those who grieve. May we touch their lives not only through our prayers, but through our lives and actions as well. And let us also receive your healing and empowering touch in your ever-abiding spirit of compassion so that we may grow and flourish in your love and grace every day. Guide us, uplift us, and hold us, for we are your children called to your purpose in this world. Let us brighten our corner of Austin community with our ministry that embodies your love and justice, especially in times of trial and turmoil. Continue to hear our prayers, those spoken and those hidden in our hearts, as we also pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and glory forever. Amen. Now let us recommit ourselves to God's love and dedicate our offerings to God. Ushers may come forward. the night, 
nor the arrow that flies by day, though thousands fall about you, near you it shall not come, and they will raise you up on eagles' wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine like the sun. God's given a command to guard you in all of your ways. Upon their hands they will bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And they will raise you up on eagles' wings, bear you on the breath of you to shine like the sun and hold you in the palm of their hand. Amen. Friends, may we stand as we are able as we join together in our prayer of dedication. O oh God, for all the ways you love us, we say, Thank you. For the ways you provide for us, we say, Thank you. For the opportunity to give, we say, Thank you. And for letting us be a part of your work in so many ways. One of the ministries here at UUMC that I lift up is our UUMC Votes that's already preparing for students at UT to be back in session later this summer and early fall, and they will be registering young people and others to vote. And so for all of these gifts, we say, thank you, God, amen. Before I share a couple of announcements, I want to just say um, a, a thank you to the incredible staff and team that I get to work with. I know that Megan has been away um, several weeks this summer on some renewal time, and she is making her way back. I think will be with us next Sunday. Um, and for for Av, who's been um, playing piano because Unju is taking a couple of Sundays off, I'm grateful for you, and um, again for this great team for Natasha and Jillian being with our youth. I want to share with you that next Sunday in worship, as we worship, um, I know Pastor Earl and I are probably not going to be robed. We're going to be wearing our blue jeans because it is Blue Jean Sunday. And the important thing about that, you can wear blue jeans if you want to worship. But the most important thing is that we are going to be collecting new and gently used blue jeans for our fig leaf closet. Those jeans go quick each Saturday morning. And so there's more information in our bulletins about how you can help that ministry. And now I'm gonna turn it over to AV real quick because they have some announcements about music stuff. <laughs> Hello? Great. <laughs> 
so I just wanted to share with y'all, um, it's in your bulletin uh, as well, but just to, just to put it right at the front of your brains, um, Family Choir uh, is this Wednesday, is our rehearsal for Family Choir. It's from 5.30 to 6.30. Um, you do not have to have kids to come. Uh, you can bring your neighbors or your roommates or uh, your grandparents or your coworkers or your kids and your grandchildren. Um, please come and hang out and we will sing together and it is a lot of fun. We had a great time last time we did that. Um, and then the week after that is tenor bass choir. So I'm just gonna look at some people. <laughs> okay? <laughs> If you are a tenor or bass and you don't always have the time to sing every single week, I totally get it. This is a one-off. And you come, rehearse, and then we sing that Sunday. And after our rehearsal, oh yeah, I forgot to look at Pastor Earl. <laughs> he said he would. Pastor Teresa sang with the trebles. Okay. Um, after rehearsal, uh, we will have some fellowship together. It'll be a lot of fun, and then we'll sing together, and it'll be great. Please come out for that. That'll be in two weeks. Um, also, Pride is coming up. Austin Pride. Woohoo! August 10th, um, and we are putting together our float. We have our trailer all lined up. Thank you, Bob. McLaren, I don't know, there he is. Thanks, Bob. Uh, <laughs> and so we just need people to help build the trailer and help decorate um, and to march. So if that is you, if you're ready to sign up, there are sign-up sheets in the lobby. And the day after Pride Parade is, oh my goodness, the talent show. <laughs> and so if you have a talent, any talent at all, if you wanna sing or dance or read a poem that you wrote or do a science demonstration or explain thermodynamics to everybody, um, <laughs> I don't know what your skills are, um, there's a sign-up sheet for that as well and there's also a potluck on the talent show day and there's a sign-up sheet for that too okay that's enough information wow a thriving vibrant congregation we're doing a lot of things okay please join us in singing our closing hymn which is how can i keep from singing Friends, this day, as you leave this place, I want to leave with you these words written by civil rights leader William Sloan Coffin. He wrote this, 
He said, may God give you the grace to never, never sell yourself short. May God give you the grace to risk something big for the sake of something good. And may God give us the grace to remember that the world is too dangerous for anything but the truth and too small for anything but love. Go in peace. Amen.